Very glad with you tonight. Thanks for staying on on our journey to the general elections 2024. That's May 29. Some polls and political analysts are forecasting that the Democratic Alliance could lose its majority in the Western Cape during the upcoming elections. South Africans will vote in national and provincial elections on May 29th. And for more on the province's political landscape ahead of the polls. We're joined now by Patriotic Alliance Western Cape Premier candidate Gayton McKenzie, the Good Party's National Chairperson Matthew Cook, ACDP Western Cape Premier candidate Felon Christians, and Action SA Western Cape Premier candidate Angela Sorbe, who's a resident here now. <laughs> good to have you on, and thank you very much for coming in. Uh, gee, good to have you, and thank you very much for coming on, as well as uh, Matthew uh, and uh, Felon uh, there joining us on the line. It seems... Uh, all of you collectively uh, sitting here are planning the biggest bank heist we've ever seen uh, in, 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 in the Western Cave. We Katie? might just be. <laughs> well, you see, uh, that were, uh, the person that accused us of planning the big bank heist, if they have done for the people of the Western Cape, which they are saying they did, then they, had no pro then they wouldn't have had a problem they are having now. I mean, they're going on like malmen, so they're crazy, going like, hey, come in here, what do they want here? What do they want here? If you've done your job, you don't need to worry. They know that they have done nothing for the majority of the residents in the Western Cape. They have only serviced a small, tiny, minute minority in the Western Cape. The rest of the people in the Western Cape are worse off than, I mean, it's, it's undescribable what is happening in the Western Cape. And the DA has been lying and lying, but lies catch up with you. What, what, what is happening in the Western Cape? I mean, you've had a couple of stances as a, as a mayor here and there. What, what is going on? What's the picture? That's the, except for the fact that where they govern, they govern well. They've got the surplus in their accounts. Their uh, finances are managed well. They get clean audits and so on and so forth. You see, they got clean audits, but Kalicha stinks. They got clean orders, but people in Langa stoves are being bit, baby stoves are being bitten by rats. They got clean orders, but people don't have jobs in our in, in the province. You look at right now today. This morning I met with the victims of fire in Pal, in Kenda Street. Those people, their houses burned down. The DA is bringing those people cookies instead of instead of rebuilding those houses. What they are, they are very good with all those things, like, no, we've got a clean order. A clean order, I was a mayor, I got a clean order too, in the central Karua. But a clean order means nothing if the people on the ground cannot see what you've been doing. They have stolen, the DA have stolen that province with all the wealthy businessmen. They've stolen that province empty. Our people are backyard dwellers in the Western Cape. But that is coming to an end on the 29th of May. It's coming to an end. If they have been so good and so doing all the stuff that they say they've been doing, then why are the people turning against them yeah. and voting for our parties now? Matthew, are they all good? As good? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think the blue lies have got a, uh, have got a history of hiding behind clean audits and, uh, and these uh, claims that the Western Cape is a completely different uh, country to the to, to what the the rest of the country sees, but when you actually go down into the Western Cape and you start exploring a little bit outside of the well-known suburbs and the areas which the DA cares for, you start to see just how much dereliction there is in the Western Cape. There are so many people that are living in such terrible uh, situations where sewage is running through the streets, mm -hmm. where where people are are homeless, where gangsterism is rife, yeah. and and uh, the the blue lies just want to uh, paint this picture that that they're in this sunny seaside. Orania, you know, uh, which doesn't I, I, really I, I, exist. I had a, a, a conversation at length with, with John Hill Lewis, particularly on the, on the question of the sewer infrastructure, sanitation infrastructure. That's, that's the legacy of, of, of the past government. Yes, there is infrastructure there. Uh, there are also areas that are uh, harder to, to access. But they, there is money that's being allocated towards that. But much of it is also the, 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 the mandate of national government because, uh, the, the, for example, the local government there can only do so much. Well, well here's the issue. Uh, and and the, the Cape Town and the Western Cape government, both are led by the, uh, the Democratic Alliance, right? And those blue lies, they, they want to keep uh, passing on this legacy thing or, or to blaming national government for, for, for their failures. The DA has been in government in the Western Cape for 15 years. And what has changed for the majority of people there? Not much.
Not enough has been done. And so this is, this is something that, that they can finger point all they like. But we as good, we place our, uh, we, we place our, our real um, uh, faith in the voters of the Western Cape. Because come 29th of May, they'll show those blue lies. They'll show them what the facts are on the ground. And the reality is, is that the Democratic Alliance has had 15 years to make changes in the Western Cape. And we say they have not done enough. Yeah. Uh, Angela, so a very interesting debate going on with one analyst and, and, and another analyst, so to speak, uh, on, on, on Twitter. And the, the language that is, is, is coming up is that all new parties, young new parties that are coming in, are using that gefaar to <laughs> divide the Western Cape province. Um, well, I'm not sure which parties those are, but it's certainly not Action SA. Action SA is, is a, 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 a you know, racially inclusive party. And as a candidate myself of mixed race, I am part Kosa, I am part colored. I, I, I don't have the luxury of picking a side because when we talk about the forgotten people of the Western Cape, we are talking colored people, we are talking black people. So I'm not in this um, campaign to make it about race. Incidentally, I think the last time I was, I was in the studio, we were talking about the colored, uh, the colored vote. Yeah. And subsequently, having gone to the Western Cape and having been deployed as the, as the premier candidate, what, what my, my, my colleagues around the table are touching on, it has actually been traumatizing to see the absolute squalor that people live in in mm. the Western Cape. So the Western Cape has so so let's let's go to the issue of this best run province or even city compared to what the benchmark that's the ANC which is one of the lowest benchmarks I mean it's that's like a what a 15 percent pass rate or a five percent pass rate Lord knows but going into the into the Cape Flats table you when you drive through the suburbs you are driving through utopia it's beautiful take a short left and go to the ground what they've currently what they've been doing in the western cape is they've been they've been um, tarring the main arterial roads yeah. and when you go off those roads is where you see the raw sewage is where you see the actual issues on the ground when you engage with the communities of the western cape you find the, some of the highest incidence of unemployment in the Cape Flats and the, 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 the disadvantaged areas. The trains don't run along the full central line, yeah. and people are spending a massive percentage of their meager income, those that are fortunate enough to be working on taxis to get to work, sometimes spending up to two to three yeah. hours But they're going to say to you, I mean, listening to us, what has that got to do with the Democratic Alliance as a party in the province? Because that is a PRASA issue. It's and not, the Prasa it's was, just was price, ruined by the ANC, no, no. The, the employment issue is an economy that is not you doing cannot, well, and these people are not finding jobs. When, when it's a success, you own it, and when it's not a success, you, you want, to, you want to, 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 to cast the blame upwards. It doesn't work like that. As a government, you are responsible to all citizens, those that voted for you and those that didn't vote for you. And unfortunately, the people of the Western Cape are getting this, the, the, the disadvantaged communities of the Western Cape are getting this in double measure because they're getting it from national government and they're getting it from the provincial government. The unemployment, which contributes to the poverty, the levels of substance abuse in the Western Cape, which contribute to crime, to gangsterism, to, um, to gender-based violence and femicide, and one of the highest rates of homelessness you'll see in any other city in this country. So, so the notion that they've got the lowest unemployment rate in comparison to the national level. Which is a very low benchmark. I mean, you, it's an unrealistic benchmark. Is this what we are promising South Africans? Is that what we think of our citizens in this country? That that's what they deserve? Look at this and compare to here's the benchmark and we're here, so that's fine. Look at us, we're all good. No, that's the South Africans deserve better than that. Fellow, let's bring you in here. Uh, your view as the SCDP on how that uh, province is being run and, and, and how it could better be run. Yeah, uh, good evening and, and thank you very much for the discussion. I, I think there's a lot to be done in the Western Cape. It is true that people is getting, uh, you know, in, in townships are 
still having, you know, Suri's ra- running down the streets. It's true that, you know, gangsterism has arrived. It's true that all of that. And that's why the ACDP, uh, our logo uh, this year around is service, order, and safety. Because we believe we heard as the ACDP the cries of our people. And when you see tires burning, people is looking for service delivery. And that's why that's one of our main features. How do we improve service delivery? And, of course, order. We need order in our homes, order in our schools. There's just no order. And safety. In South Africa, 70 people are killed. In the Western Cape, there's many, many people killed every day. So our people are not safe. They get, cannot get safe to work. When they get on the train or when they walk, they're not safe. And that's why, as the ACDP, we are serious to present God-fearing men and women to represent the people of the Western Cape. Uh, I'm a serving member in the Western Cape Provincial uh, Parliament for 10 years. I know what happens in education. We, um, uh, uh, as a party that's around for 30 years with a proven track record and a party with a fearless leader that has uh, led this party to, to be at what it is today. And so we believe that we can make a difference in the Western Cape. We know the plight of our people. We are, our councillors are on the ground. We are on the ground. And we believe there's a lot to be done. Yeah. So, yes, um, I still believe, and we believe as the ACDP, that you cannot bench, like the previous speaker said, you cannot have a benchmark uh, with the ANC. I challenge Alan Windy and the DA to say, you must look at international standards. You cannot look, even a great um, a great uh, uh, R learner can do better than the ANC. So the ANC is no yardstick. So we believe, as the ACDP, we've got a pivotal role to play to improve the lives of all the people in the Western Cape. Right. So we have now spoken about the current government in place and what they are lacking. And you all seem to think you have a solution to this. So let's hear what are some of the solutions. I know you saw one of your followers saying, well, if you can come up with the plan to deal with gangsterism, drugs and alcohol in the Western Cape, you will definitely get their vote. I mean, you've got a slogan for immigration. I have not heard your slogan to deal with the, 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 the crime situation. Uh, no, no, thank you very much. Here's the issue is that, you know, uh, I, I just think I have to answer you on the Vatkafar thing. Yeah. All of a sudden, when the colored people of the Western Cape are finding their voice and they are uniting, uh, 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 they are reuniting and saying, we are standing up, we are no longer voting for the DA. We will vote for Action SA, we will vote for Good, we will vote for ACDP, but we're not going to vote for the DA. All of a sudden now, they pull out the race card. You see, the premier is white. The mayor of Cape Town is white. The mayor of Saldana is white. The mayor of Saldana. This is in a province with a majority colored people. And it's white males running that province. Now they mustn't come with, there's no vetgevaar, that is next vetgevaar in the baro. Then I want to come with the issue of gangsterism. You see, every time people talk about gangsterism, I get very angry because they just talk about the violent part of it. You see, gangsterism is a socio-economic uh, issue. You need to speak that people don't have jobs, they get jobs by the drug dealer. People don't have jobs, they get jobs as a hitman. All those things is in a province with money in the bank. They don't reinvest the money back in the province. So I am saying to the Democratic Alliance, you know, when I became the mayor of Central Karua, I, I was shocked. I couldn't believe how heartless these people are. The worst roads you get, you get in Central Karua. But you know how much they spend in Central Karua on roads? Less than 1%. Mm-hmm. Less than 1% they spend. They will choke the municipalities that they don't control financially. So that they can have a story to tell that, you see, they don't know how to govern. Now, the reason why they hate the Patriotic Alliance, because when I became the mayor, there's three things that I couldn't believe. Number one. There were six pools built at huge cost. All those pools were not working. Second thing that they did was uh, the people in Yohanka, 
got dirty water, literally brown dirty water. You have to cook that water to drink it. And that's what the people did. When there's load shedding, nobody drinks water. That's the, that's the uh, uh, second thing. And then we had hundreds of people having bucket toilets. Mm. The Patriotic Alliance under my leadership, we said as the mayor, in 100 days, if I don't fix those three things I've mentioned, I will resign. I said it publicly. I said it on this show. I said it everywhere. In 100 days, I fixed the pools. The people in Luhamka have got clean drinking water today. Nobody's using a bucket toilet. Now, I'm saying in 100 days, I will deal with this issue of gangsterism. I will deal with the issue of shooting. Because I've got a record of telling you, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. The Democratic Alliance, let us do it. If they get 30% in the Western Cape, they will tell the funders, you know, in Constantia, the horses has more place to grace than in Manson, Hanover Park. Our people are, are not getting in George. Yeah. They will give rich business people from Johannesburg, some being my friends. Yeah. They'll give them the land to develop. Yeah. But they are not even willing to give us a bicycle park. That's not even one hectare. For Matthew, let's come back to you. The, 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 the land question, right? And, and uh, uh, when, when Patricia Durrell was here, she even brought a map to show us the piece of land uh, that is uh, uh, under the hands of the Democratic Alliance. And they are saying, no, why doesn't government release land uh, to, 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 to the people? Uh, Gaten says, no, there's, there is land that has been released. There's, plenty of, there's, uh, plenty, there's plenty of land. Um, and what we must remember is that uh, land is owned at all three spheres of government. So your municipal, your provincial, and your national all own land. Um, in the Western Cape, there's some 22 parcels of land that when uh, Patricia DeLille, who is our uh, premier candidate for the Western Cape, was mayor of Cape Town for eight years, that she had identified and, and had started to, uh, uh, start to release those uh, pieces of land and start to develop them for low-cost housing. And, I mean, that was part of the fallout with the Blue Liars in Monty Pat, was the issue on land, is that the DA had made promises in their election manifestos of this is what they were going to do, but when it came to implementing it, they had little political will to follow through on that. And, um, I, I mean, we, we look at the Tafelberg School uh, situation. Uh, Tafelberg School has been uh, committed to this project for... I think it's now 20 years or so. The same as the undeveloped bridges in Cape Town. Everybody knows about those bridges. Those pieces of land were, were agreed to that they were going to be into high-rise, low-cost housing that allowed people who work on the Atlantic seaboard, who work in the uh, city center, to be able to live within those areas. Good as, as for a long time said that uh, public land must be used for public good and that it's, uh, this, this uh, apartheid spatial planning has to end. We can't continue to say to people, Yes, okay, we're going to give you land, but it's going to be 60 kilometers out of the city center, and you're going to spend 40 to 60 percent of your income mm -hmm. traveling to and from work. Mm -hmm. um, so, so there is land, and, and government has this land. The Western Cape government has this land. The city of Cape Town has this land. But it requires political will and determination to have those pieces of land distributed and uh, developed. Yeah. But instead, we'll develop uh, fancy malls and, uh, and things for a, for a few that are, you know, uh, hiding behind this semigration. You yeah. know, we want to say, oh, the Western Cape has got so much semigration and there's so much this. But it serves a, a few people while the, the Cape Flats and the rest of the, the um, inhabitants of the Western Cape are left to rot. What is your approach as, as the... As actually they say on the question of land, because um, your, your, your manifesto is for the protection of uh, uh, property rights, mm -hmm. if, I, if, if, if I'm correct, and, 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 and you have this land hunger question. How do you address that? Well, when it comes to the Western Cape in particular, it is extremely important to understand that the people that are living on the periphery of the city are, people of, are the forgotten people of the Western Cape. Yeah. And there is in certainly an issue of apartheid legacy spatial planning that does need to be addressed. The, our stance as Action SA is precisely to protect um, property owners against land grabs. And our, our biggest, um, one of our number one priorities as Action SA is the rule of law and anti-corruption. And this has a lot to do with issues of property and so on in the Western Cape. Incidentally, in the Western Cape, Tabo, if you go into certain areas, you will find, I'll come to the Cape Flats itself and what is happening there, but if you go into some of the more 
affluent areas or the middle class areas, there is actually an, organ, an orchestrated effort to almost drive addicts into those areas so that crime spikes and property prices drop and there is somebody behind the scenes picking up those properties for a steal. And once their pro property portfolio has been filled sufficiently, they will then bring in law and order to drive out the, the, the addicts. The issue of addiction, the issue of homelessness, the issue of gender-based violence and femicide, gangsterism, crime, unemployment, and poverty is one that impacts those very communities on the periphery. Coming to the issue of apartheid legacy spatial planning, when you look at the flats in the Cape Flats, where, where I grew up in Helen Court, those stairs are a, com a, a combination of concrete and steel. And somebody cannot, with, with unsteady legs, or yeah. somebody that walks on crutches, yeah. Yeah. cannot safely walk out the, up those stairs right. because those flats aren't being maintained. Yeah, if you go story, to yeah. areas like Ocean View, yeah. you find raw sewage dripping into somebody else's unit downstairs from the unit upstairs. We visited Mannenberg a week ago, and I want to touch on, on what Gayton was saying about the requirement for a holistic solution. Mm. When we visited Mannenberg, there was a lady that was living on the top floor apartment at number 12, mm. which means you've got to go up those stairs. Yeah. And she had been shot by a, struck by a stray bullet seven years ago, has yeah. been confined to a wheelchair, yeah. and has to be carried up and down those stairs. And... The people servicing her wheelchair cannot understand why she needs basically a new wheelchair every time. And the same government is not interested in those people that, that are living, living there in, in terms of ensuring that they have accessible housing. The, those same communities do not have recreational facilities. Children on the Cape Flats do not have somewhere to go after school, to go and play, to go and develop their talent. The, 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 the forgotten people, your underprivileged communities, is where there is an abundance of raw talent, and there seems to be a very conscious effort to suppress the development of that raw talent. Yeah. Coming to the issue of gangsterism, when I was in the same Mannenberg oh, just a week ago, I was actually engaged by a group of gangsters in the area who said to me, you politicians only come here when you want our vote. And I said, you're absolutely right. What should be happening is that there should be a more genuine response to the issues of the forgotten people. Because when you look at parties that believe that they're entitled to govern areas, why are you coming to contest us here? It seems to be almost like a God-given right that we, we're doing this well, but you're doing it well for a tiny demographic. When 80% of the population is not benefiting from those services, mm -hmm. the same conversation that I was engaged in, we, we chatted for a good 30 to 40 minutes. And all that gangsters, reformed gangsters and members and, and residents of these communities want is skills development programs. The same thing when you look at your addicts. You cannot just send an addict into rehab and leave them there. Yeah. With your rehabilitated gangsters and your addicts in recovery, it is important to have a special skills development program for them because their chances of unemployment in an already minimal market are almost zero. And should they be fortunate to find a job in that very small market, if anything goes wrong, the first suspect is the recovering drug addict or the, the reformed gangster. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ferran, uh, the, the, the stark picture that always strikes a lot of people when they speak about human settlement and uh, uh, human settlement development in, 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 the, in the Western Cape, especially, is the picture that you see when you land, and that highway, and, and what you see on this side, and what you see on the other side. What do you think has happened in the last 15 years that has not managed to, to address that issue uh, of, 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 of human settlement? I'll answer that right now, but let me just come back to one or two points um, because I, I also just want to uh, say that as the ACDB, we were today in Bontierville and then to Manenberg, and I just come from Osenville. Uh, just to look at the plight of the people, and you know, it's true that um, 
I heard Gaten says, give him 100 days and he will sort out crime. Give the ATDP 50 days, half of the time, and we will sort out the crime problem in the Western Cape. We don't need 100 days. Because we've got a plan, we've got a, we know exactly what to do, how to address it, What's how to plan? address um, the. Uh, uh, look, it's, it's, it's very simple, very simple. Uh, our youngsters is on the on the on the streets. They sitting on the streets. They cannot be employed because they do not have skills. And we have definite plans to make sure that our youngsters get the opportunity because they want to, many of them want to get employed but they're not employed because they're not employable so we need to go out we need to use the school the churches the mosque all the facilities that we can have get the retired teacher get retired tradesmen in and take our youth off the streets there's enough money for stipends to pay stipends instead of giving them 350, we can give them stipends in order to steal them so that we give them a fishing rod, they can catch their own fish. So by giving grants all the time, I know we must give grants for them interim measure, but it cannot be a lifelong thing. We need to get a skill into our youngsters. So there's more plans that the ACDP has got, and we will make sure that we get rid of crime and that our people are safe on the streets. Let me just get to your informal settlements, and we have something like 2,000 uh, informal settlements in, in the Western Cape. If you look at the Western Cape waiting list, a 600,000 on the waiting list. Now, of course, we have an un- influx of people, but you see, wh- the problem that we have is, and I've been to many, many places where people get a house and they cannot afford the house. They sell the house and then they move back uh, to the informal settlement. Uh, they, you have those cases, and then you have the cases where informal settlements, you know, people don't want to be in the house because they don't want to comply to the rules, and they also move out. So there's various problems that we have, and then we have political parties and political leaders that says occupy a vacant land, and that is totally unacceptable. So we believe there, there must be a plan, but you see, the, the one way is let's get our people working. Let's get our people in jobs. Let's get them to afford when they stay in a house. Let me just say the last thing maybe of that is very important. At the moment, our schooling system is also broken. Our youngsters are dropping out of school and they are recruited by, by drug lords. The other day when I was in Manenberg and I saw the youngsters sitting on the street corner, he said to me, he gets 2,000 rand just to be a lookout, just to look at if the police and those people are coming. So there's a lot of things happening. So what we believe, we must keep our children in school. Schools are also not safe. I mean, I've been to so many schools. Drugs has arrived, guns has arrived. So you need to sort out a lot of problems. But like they said, it's in your areas where the crime is right. So it's not just a crime problem. It's a societal problem, and you must address all of them. I've been to a school in Alsis River, and I was shocked to see that everything is broken, and children must sit in that class. And I asked them, but what is happening here? It's gangsters breaking in. The department comes and fix it. Gangsters come and break in. And I said to them, we need to address the community because the community must take ownership of that school. They must be proud of that school. So as you can hear, I, I, uh, we have the knowledge. We know what's happening. I'm, I'm for 10 years on the education uh, portfolio. I'm for 10 years now on community safety. We've got the skills. Yeah. We've got the expertise as the ACDP to bring about change immediately. Back live tonight here on InFocus, uh, Gates and McKenzie of Patriot Alliance, Matthew Cook of the Good Party, and Jasobi of uh, Action SA and fellow Christians, ACDP. Uh, all premiers uh, or premier candidates, at least, uh, for uh, the Western Cape in the May 29 general elections. Let's, uh, yeah, there's a lot to, 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 to dissect <laughs> there in, in the time that we have. But I, I suppose the big issue that uh, Felon is raising, he says he can bring skills in 50 days and uh, deal with the issue of uh, uh, gangsters there, uh, get them capacitated, get, give them a fishing rod, and get them out there uh, fishing. Uh, what's your big uh, approach to, to the skills? I mean, how things got a skills master plan. They are now Nothing bringing about 500,000 uh, 500, <laughs> people, and they're going to give them skills with no, money from, from the UIF. 
Uh, 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 in the time that I've been in politics, I've never had such nonsense like I've just had the gentleman fell and speaking. Not only is he speaking nonsense, but he is, he is busy with class antagonism. Mm. What he's doing, that's exactly class antagonism. Mm. You see, wealthy people buy a house today mm. and they sell it tomorrow. And they get praise for selling the house. Once you give a poor people house, uh, any poor person house, and that person sells the house, then you hear nonsense being spoken like we just heard now. What is good for the goods is good for the gender. What are rich, if once you deliver a house to anybody, what they do with their house, it, it, it's not unless they've signed a certain clause, number one. Number two, he says he's going to sort out gangsterism in 50 days. He's living in a dream world. He says he's not going to take 100 days. He's been there for 10 years. What has he been doing for 10 years except getting a salary? 200 people died in the past month in Mitchell's plane. Mm -hmm. He's actually propping up the DA and agreeing with everything. This ACDP is agreeing with the DA on every step. So he must not come here. We are not dealing here with uh, who's the strongest here. We are dealing with people's lives, mm -hmm. people's situation. And you know, one of the things that hurt me is that he is part of safety and security. Four months ago, I buried th three people in Bishop Lavers. They were just complaining about the fact that it's leaking and about services. You know what the Democratic Alliance did? And he's sitting in that committee. Now he comes here and talks how he's going to sort He's part of the problem. They came, they shot people like dogs. They killed three people, which the PA buried those people. He's not talking about as he comes talking his nonsense here about, uh, no, I'm going to sort in 50 days. Why don't we start with that fact that people were killed for merely raising their voice, for merely standing up and say we can't live in this situation. Do you know that part of our day every day is to negotiate with people that's living on the fourth floor, old people, mm -hmm. to negotiate on their behalf on the third floor. Mm -hmm. For them, for the youngsters that lives on the mm -hmm. first floor, to, for them to move there, because the old people, as Angela has rightly said, cannot get up there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our people, the f you know, it breaks my heart when you talk about the fishermen. Our people are, fi we, we, we are fishing communities. Today, our people have been told they can't catch fish. Mm. This Easter, our people couldn't catch fish. But you have the Chinese trawlers, mm. you have illegal trawlers, you have people sitting in Sandton having a fishing quota mm. that knows nothing about the industry, while you have people that have generations of generations of, of fishermen and fisherwomen that can't access fish. But I'm saying to them, a change is going to come. Everything, you ask me, what am I going to do? I'm going to stop privilege. I'm going to stop the fact that horses got more place to grace than my people have a place to stay. I'm going to stop the fact that gangsterism is not only speaking to the gangs. Mm -hmm. I can take you that 2,000 rands he's talking about to be on the lookout. If I take that boy away from the lookout, I need to give him something else to do. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm going to yeah. busy myself with. Quick 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 not quick quick under this. I'm going to say, there's just no way that uh, a patriotic alliance will, will, will uh, get the numbers except through a coalition. Others are saying, in fact, a vote for the patriotic alliance is a vote for an ANC coalition. Mm. Well, you know, the first thing is that in the history, all the parties sitting here, including the DA, nobody has in the past one year taken more people away from the ENC than us. Let me make an example. Amelia Zama was the councillor of Ennerdale from the ANC. The PA took her. Ferguson was a councillor of the ANC in what one? In Salt Lake. The PA took her. It took, it took him. Uh, uh, Chet Lowe was the mayor and was a councillor in Oatsworth and Dieseldorp, which I'm going to tell you about what they've done in Dieseldorp with the ANC. The PA took So how can we be a lackey of the ANC? I've given you actuals. I've given you extras to say we've removed them in Salt Lake, we've removed them in what one? We've removed them in, 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 in Ennerdale. How can we be a lucky? That, that is, as, 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 as it's being called, those are the blue liars talking those things. Yeah. They need to create a narrative. We all by Zani, we are not for the DA, we are not for the ANC. We see the one as a tiger, we see the one as a lion. We just see who between the tiger and the lion can advance our interest yeah. for our people. And we take decisions on a case-by-case case matter. And you speak to every party. Even to the AWB, yeah. if they still exist. You did say. You did say. <laughs> What's the big plan on jobs? I mean, 
you got uh, Action SA promising 4.5 million or 4.8. You've got uh, ANC saying now they'll give us 2.5. Uh, and you've got uh, EFF also a couple of millions that they're promising. Uh, uh, Musi Mama and saying a job in every home. What are you saying? You know, I think, I think this thing of jobs has been around for 30 years now. Um, and every party comes around and redresses it in a different way every election. You know, job in every home, six million jobs, whatever it is. Jobs are promised uh, consistently. But, um, yes, there is a crisis with jobs. But the, the, the current rate of unemployment and that is not something that's going to be fixed overnight. If people think that uh, things are going to change and that there's going to be a job in every home uh, come 1st of June if they vote for whoever it might be, whoever's going to the moon or whoever's not going to the moon, I don't know. The, the reality is, is that if you think that's going to change in a short period of time, it's not. You're just going to be uh, shuffling deck chairs on the Titanic. Uh, um, uh, there has to be a certain amount of social reform first. And this is why Good has also been advocating for the 999 basic income grant, because the Constitution says that if people, if the state is, if, if somebody is unemployed, they need to be covered by the state. They need to be looked after. The, the, the long-term uh, uh, process in jobs is going to take 10 to 15 years to, to correct the unemployment in, in this country. And we, the state has to then provide for the most vulnerable of citizens in that interim. Yes, we need to look at jobs. Yes, we need to look at uh, things like uh, uh, skills and training and TVET colleges. All of the focus of those things have been heavily, heavily um, disinvested in. And those are the areas where people can. You know, Good has taken its own money out of its own pocket to prove that South Africans are not uh, looking for grants. They're looking for opportunities. We took um, uh, 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 some 50,000 rand and gave people a thousand rand to start their own small business business, their own uh, uh, small business. And we've seen people going and, and starting businesses, selling cleaning equipment, uh, we've started barber shops, uh, we've started uh, mini bakeries, all in, in informal settlements w with a small investment. So uh, jobs, yes, there, there is, a, there is a, a desperate need for jobs. But South Africans are an entrepreneurial type. They're, they're the type of people who want to create opportunities, not only for themselves, but for other people. But they just don't have the means in which to do it. And so the state has got a responsibility to provide for those people and to help them and to assist them, to cut the red tape. There's so much red tape for small to medium enterprises, for the young individual who wants to start a business, who just can't get funding. So this is something that has to be looked at a little more holistically than just promising a job in every home. A job in every home is an empty promise that has been going on for 30 years and it needs to end <laughs> all right quick one from uh, pam francis in Kabecha on whatsapp 072 saying good evening my concern specifically regarding coalition government agreements in my city i've witnessed how the current coalition and the previous are and have driven our city further down the dumps there is a clear uh, divide between the western mostly white suburbs and the northern areas mostly colored and black mm. suburbs. So the question of coalition is one that's going to come up. You are very clear. No ANC, no EFF. Mm. Uh, what, is, what is the likely possibility? We're in the Western Cape? Yes. Well, in, under the current agreement, the multi-party charter, um, it applies to national government. The Democratic Alliance has specified that yeah. it does not include the Western Cape. My view is that that is also shaky, especially with very shaky. Yeah. Very shaky. Very shaky. But that's very just shaky. my view, well, the, yeah. the multi-party charter. But the multi -party, look, yeah. it, we are contesting at this point in time. So you, you, it, it is, we're in a democracy. Every party is entitled to contest mm. the elections, and that's exactly what we're doing. Ours is to go out there and demonstrate to the voters why they should give us their vote rather than any other party and that's what everyone is doing so by by being part of a multi-party charter was basically trying to preempt that the the objective here is to drop the ANC's um, you know a, a percentage at national level the same as we are doing in the Western Cape is we're wanting to get into the Western Cape and the ideal in any campaign is for the voters to give you an outright majority but in the event that you do not get that majority, everybody sitting around this table um, is, has basically said that they will talk to, to everybody else. We have been quite clear and we've been very consistent as Action SA that we will not talk to the ANC. You cannot talk to the same party that has caused the very predicament that we find ourselves in as, 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 as a country. Um, we are very clear about the fact that 
we do want to bring change to, to the people of South Africa. And that change cannot be brought about by going into a coalition with the same people that have caused the problem. Right. Fellow, let me give you an opportunity to respond to, to, to Gayton and what he has raised. Yeah, you know, um, just listening to him, I can hear that he does not know a lot about politics. He doesn't know the difference between local, provincial and national government. So I'm going to stop there because he thinks by being a mayor of a tiny little town, he, um, he knows politics. I can tell you now, the PA is not going to do well because by elections, they run with food parcels to the people and buy people's votes. Um, the PA, I mean, you know, we have said we will not work uh, uh, with the ANC, the EFF, and uh, he can say whatever he wants to say. He will work with the ANC. That tape that was leaked, he will go work with the ANC. So our job in the Western Cape is to make sure that we keep the ANC, EFF, and PA out of government so that we can have a reliable government in the Western Cape. Um, he does not even know that when you are in opposition in provincial parliament, you do not introduce your policies. You inter the, the, the ruling party introduces their policies. He says, what am I talking being 10 years on community safety? You cannot implement your policies if you're not the governing party. Right. So uh, the 101 of politics, right. 101 on politics, Gaten doesn't know. So he's not ready. He must learn more. And maybe when he grows up, you can talk to me about government. All right, Gaten, let's talk about this question of a possible doomsday coalition that the DA says it wants to stop by, uh, I suppose, voting with the ANC. All right. I think the first thing, Action SA approached the PA four weeks ago with something brilliant. They want to remove the ANC and Ekurleni. They wanted to know, will you vote with us as PA? We said yes, we'll vote with Action SA. The plan was there, we'll remove the ANC and Ekurleni. Guess who kept the ANC and Ekurleni? The Democratic Alliance. That's fact. Here's the person of Action SA. It's Angela, you can ask her. If the DA voted with Action SA, would have been able to remove the ANC. So, well, they said they're not going to support an Action SA candidate, uh, according to now, Action SA in Ekurleni. Action SA yeah. has supported a DA candidate in CB, uh, still here in, 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 in Chwani. Mm -hmm. Now, if you can see that Herbert Mashaba has got, he's got dignity, he's honest. He says, all right, I've supported you here, support me here. Mm -hmm. The DA is just about themselves. But they they support them, they don't want to support them. Then the second point I want to raise regarding this issue. You see, for us as a coalition is that uh, for 25, uh, Courtney Mulder of the Freedom Front told me that he's been sitting in, co in opposition for 25 years. He says, he, there's not really much you can do in opposition. How people need jobs. And, 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 and for us, politics, when you agree with the DA, and then they will treat you the way that they've treated Action SA in Ekurleni. Now, because they can't treat us the way they've treated Action SA in Ekurleni, and it's no fault of Action SA, no fault of Action SA. Because Action SA was honest, they were dishonest. But these are the type of people that you are dealing with. Mm. Uh, the gentleman that says, I don't know nothing about politics, uh, while I've been part of building a force of a party, they've never won a word as ACDP. Not one word. Let him show me one word they've won. In the Western Cape, for the past 15 years, no party other than the ANC and the DA has ever won a word in the past 15 years. The Patriotic Alliance have won Kensington. So he mustn't say we're a small party. He's just there for a salary. For 10 years he's been there doing nothing. He says he wants to remove the ANC. He wants to work with the DA. The very people, he's making my point for me. The very same people. They don't give our people housing. The very same people that didn't give our people. And the ANC and the DA are both the enemies. Our wish is for Action SA because they're honest. For good because they're honest. PMC, they're honest. NCC, they're honest. Our prayer is for us to be able to form 51 or 52 percent so that we can have honest people that truly cares about the well-being 
of the people of the Western Cape. And not only this four kilometer stretch, they're showing all of you the car from Joburg. Look how well we are doing here. <laughs> Look at how well we are doing. I can't see what I would retire. Say, he can't put a tick by. What we I appreciate you all. Thank you very much for coming here this <laughs> evening. All right. That's Gator McKenzie, Patriotic Alliance, Western Cape Premier Candidate. Matthew Cook, uh, he is representing the good party, the Premier Candidate there, Patricia DeLille, Philip Christians, ACDP, Western Cape Premier, and Angela Sobi, Action SA, Western Cape Premier Candidate.